I'm in the SIGGRAPH 2011 Art Gallery with the artwork Wait by Julie Andreev and Simon Overstall. Uh, hi Julie, welcome to Strange Angels. Hi Glenn. So tell me about this piece. Well, it's, um, it's one work out of a body of work called Animal Lover, um, which um, I started in uh, 2008, and the works in Animal Lover examine uh, relationships between humans and non-humans, and in particular uh, relationships with companion species. Like these two, uh, these two fine pups that are here with us today. <laughs> yeah, I brought um, Tom and Sugi because they're uh, they're my collaborators. Hi, um, Tom. Hi, Sugi. Along with uh, along with Simon. Hi, Simon. Hi. And uh, I, I brought them to the to the show because I wanted um, visitors here to um, to acknowledge and to understand that that the work really isn't possible um, without actually having uh, the dogs participate and. Um, I work in, in modes um, called inter, interspecies collaboration where um, I base a lot of the content of the work on um, the dog's you know, everyday activities, um, being with me, uh, just how they, how they interact with um, a human environment, also what kinds of things they like to do, observations of them within the, the urban environment and so on. So, so this project, Wait, really grew out of um, observing how uh, dogs um, wait for instructions from uh, humans and, um, and really depend on human beings to, to be able to um, negotiate the, the human space for them. So if, if you were going to put labels on things, would you say that your, your interactions with the dogs, is that the art itself or is that the research that the art later comes out of? Or how yeah, do you that, think of that? That's a good question. Uh, that's, that's probably the research. Um, okay. So, so by, by experiencing what the, the animals are doing, um, then I base artwork on that kind of experience. Um, but, but literally a lot of the um, projects within Animal Lover are um, are you know videos or some other kind of recording of what the animals are doing in particular situations and then that becomes the content for for the artwork so um, particularly with weight um, the dogs were asked to um, perform certain activities to come to wait to go and uh, and then that became the basis of the of the actual work so your experience is a, is almost a, a live performed or a temporal kind of thing with the dogs and then our experience uh, of the work itself is, is in video mode right yeah so it, so yes there the the video is obviously the documentation of of that experience that I had with the with the uh, with the dogs themselves so so it is a document in a sense with this particular work it's an interactive document so the visitors who are visiting wait um, they come into the space and it triggers um, using camera vision and, and software that Simon developed, it, it triggers um, a video to play of one of the dogs walking towards the video. And then as long as the, the, um, the visitor remains within the interactive zone, just um, outside of the video, then the dog will continue to, to wait for instruction, just waiting. It's a very quiet kind of interactivity. And then as long as, um, <clears throat> and then when the visitor decides to leave, uh, the video will um, trigger an, uh, showing the dog actually turning around and leaving. So it's kind of a very um, low interactive um, um, installation, uh, particularly in comparison to some of the other works in, in SIGGRAPH and causes this really sort of quiet moment between the human and, and the non-human. So yes, it's, I mean, the, the level of interaction is an interesting sort of question because, you know, sometimes we want more interaction, sometimes it's too much and we feel stressed and it's, it's, it's an interesting path to try to negotiate what feels right for someone experiencing an artwork or a game or, or whatever interactive thing you're creating. Um, what do you hope people will take away from this piece? Yeah, the, I, well, um, you're, you're your point about game, I think, is is really interesting because um, you know I think in contemporary culture we have a certain expectation for objects and environments and particularly video experiences that um, that provide a, a lot of um, sensory um, um, activity. So what I'm hoping to achieve with this uh, installation is to have, in fact, the opposite, where we are 
the visitor is kind of put into a position of being required to be quiet and to wait for something to happen, just like the dogs in the video are, are waiting for an instruction. So, so in a sense, it's a, it counteracts that um, cultural experience that we normally have with pop, with uh, popular culture, particularly with games. Both with games and just, I mean, in a sense, it's a it's a culture of spectacle, right? It's, it's whether it's the Super Bowl or whatever it is, it's always kind of that Steven Spielberg, give me the biggest explosion you can, now give me a bigger one. Exactly, yeah, and um, and I and I think that this, you know. We, Humans in in this in this culture really don't have a lot of experiences where they're asked to, you know, just sit and wait for something to happen. You know, we're we're always in a kind of impatient mode. So, uh, I think this is a challenge for um, a particularly an audience such as um, the one in SIGGRAPH, but also it's a challenge for me because I it's interesting to see how people um, react to it and that they you know often. Uh, move around in the space expecting for the dog to be doing something other than just standing there and they you know get frustrated that the the dog's not doing anything else so so it's a, it's been an interesting experience installing it um, in this environment have you shown it elsewhere no this is the world this premiere is, very, very good. <laughs> but the animal lover series you've had pieces in other yeah, so th those works have been exhibited um, um, throughout Canada and, uh, and in the U.S. And so what's next for you? What's next is, um, and the, yes, the continuation of Animal Lover. I think it's going to have a long trajectory. And um, the project that I'm working on right now is a, um, is a performance piece with, uh, with Tom, one of my dogs. And he uh, ha is being trained to play the theremin. Oh, wow. um, it's a theremin that um, that I built uh, a couple of months ago, and um, Simon is is working uh, with me on it to um, develop some software so that we can have it as an audio visual experience. So for that anyone who doesn't know, remind me what a theremin a, is. So a theremin it was um, built was invented by Dr. Theremin in the 1920s. Heyday um, and spooky movie music. Exactly. So it's that high pitched. Um, um, but also really a sensitive instrument. And and it works with magnetic fields. So basically, you're not. It it isn't a physical, tangible interaction. It's actually working with fields and to create it's to create body sound. In space, but not body and touching. An Exactly, and so so the way that we have it configured with Tom is that he he likes to scratch on a rug. So we're using the rug as the interface for Tom to um, to play the the theremin uh, pitch antenna, and and I play the, uh, the 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 volume antenna at the same time. Oh, so it's a duet. It's kind of a it's kind of a duet. Well, it's it's playing one instrument. Yes. And, and would this be presented as a live performance, or would it ultimately be put on video also? Or? It's it's intended to be a live performance. So it and it um, we're also working on some visuals so that it will so that there'll be visuals playing along with the um, with the audio. And is that new for Animal Lover to have live performance? Has it all been video before? Or yes, that's oh. that's right. The only the the other um, live project that I have right now is um, is Tom and Sugi have a Twitter ID, so they're they're tweeting now and then but and how, does and that, the, how do they tweet well it's mostly an argument because they often you know argue so Tom is has a certain personality that's uh, quite stubborn and Sugi's more chilled out and so they have this discussion on on Twitter I see and, and do they do they have you interpret some of their speech for them or well yeah one would get to talk about that right how, how involved the human is in in this sort of thing <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, it, actually, it's interesting because if you, um, you know, if you go into a, a virtual world like Second Life and you create an avatar and yep. you walk around there, you know, is that exactly you or does that become someone else? Right. Your avatar is in different spaces and interacting well, with different people. And so if you're, if you're putting your own, if you're overlaying your own agenda on them, then, right. then it's kind of you. But if you're really being sensitive, you know, I mean, you're going to be part of there, but I, I think you could... Uh, you could access part of what they're up to. Well, this is actually a great point because um, that that project um, grew out of uh, um, becoming interested in a in a whole community of Twitter users who are uh, positioning their animals with with um, an ID. So so the animals are actually well, the tweets are from the animals' point of view, from the first person animals' point of view. And what it, what got me interested in that was. Um, seeing this kind of optimistic relationship between the human and the companion where the
the human is really in a position of, of um, speculation and empathy towards the, towards the animal, and that's where these tweets sort of manifest themselves. So I see it as a, this, this you know, community of Twitter users as actually um, a really uh, interesting driving force that is displaying uh, human empathy towards animals. And so what are their Twitter IDs if we want to follow them? Um, Tom and Sugi. It's Tom underscore and underscore Sugi, S-U-G-I. Oh, oh, they both tweet on the same. Yeah, they both, they share an ID. Tom and Sugi, okay. <laughs> And where do we find you on the web? I'm or at Twitter, as you like. Yes, I'm at um, animallover.ca. Oh, perfect. A N I M A L L O V E R, one word. Animal Lover, yeah, all one word. And also, I have a blog called tomandsugi.com. See you online and maybe at your live performance. Thank you, Glenn. Julie Andreev, thanks for visiting Strange Angels. Cool. <laughs>